Thanks everyone for giving me a minute to get set up. So there's two applications we're gonna highlight here. Uh, the first is gonna be biofilling. Uh, so we're gonna pick the uh, parts from the conveyor, uh, present them to our model dispense head, and then place them in a pallet. So there's a few things that we're highlighting that were touched on earlier. Um, so we'll run this program. So again, the robot is tied in with the conveyor. So when there's a product in front of the sensor, it's going to uh, wait and the robot's going to go. Uh, but once the product's gone, it's going to return to the conveyor. The robot's picking from a fixed position since we're doing a conveyor load, presenting to the same position every time, and then placing the finished part in our pallet guys with me. Over there. So again, you'll see the robot waiting for the sensor at the end of the conveyor. Um, it's just going to wait all day until the product comes down the line. Once you place product on the conveyor, the robot will go back to work. And so the next application we're going to show is CNC pin. Uh, one of the big um, uh, values in collaborative robotics is that uh, the flexibility and ability to switch from one application to the next. So here we're going to show that. Um, so we're going from picking vials, filling them, to uh, machine tending our aluminum tubes here. So all the operator has to do is open the program. And so you can save your program. A lot of times people will save their program as a SKU. So you might have SKU 1, 2, 3 uh, or SKU 4, 5, 6. So we're going to open the new program for our different product. This is going to have a different installation file, which means the safety parameters could have changed. So the robot will turn itself off and the operator needs to turn it back on. Uh, when we go to start our program, the robot again is going to try to move to its initial position. And so one of the nice features about this on-robot setup is that the gripper can be uh, mounted thanks to uh, numerous holes in any of a number of angles every 15 degrees. Uh, and so in the first application, it was convenient for us to have the gripper straight out. But in our machine tending application, uh, we're actually going to want it at a 90 degree angle because we have a tight fit over here. So what I can do is I can take out these six screws. I can reorient my gripper from this orientation to a 90 degree angle. Thank you. 
So now in a matter of five minutes, we opened our program and reoriented our gripper from straight out to 90 degree. Uh, and now we're set up for a totally new product and application. Um, so here we're modeling a CNC lathe application with our chuck over here. Uh, and we're gonna pick these aluminum tubes from a pallet. So in the last application, we were feeding from a conveyor. Here we're gonna feed from a pallet. So we're gonna use the four corners. Place the product in position. So I'm gonna slow the robot down at first just to so we can walk through what we're seeing. So I hit go. And so the robot is gonna wait for the G code or uh, M code from the CNC machine to signal that it's done its machining cycle. So when the machine signals that it's ready with a digital signal that I'm simulating with the switch, the robot will go pick a part and load it into the chuck. So here we're actually moving as an until. So the robot is moving in this direction until it senses that it hits something. Um, this is a nice feature because a lot of times in, in CNC applications, the way that a human would ro load the robot or part is by uh, pushing the part to a hard stop. The robot's doing the exact same thing to get a repeatable result. So the robot's moving until it feels the part hit the chuck, and then it releases, signals to the machine to close the chuck, and leaves. Speed up the robot a little bit. And so now the robot's gonna do a wait over here just to simulate what's going on in our CNC machine. When our CNC machine signals that it's finished its machine cycle, the robot will go unload Grab the next part from its pallet. So it's going to wait for the machine signal again. So here we're doing a force move again until we reach the hard stop to make sure the part is pushed in all the way. And so again, the, the robot is just gonna wait for as long as the machine cycle is. So if the machine cycle takes 30 minutes, two minutes, 10 minutes, the robot's gonna wait. And once it gets that signal from the machine, it'll go get the part. Again, it's waiting for the machine signal. So I'm gonna pause the robot. Another feature, safety feature of the robot um, that we're doing here. So I'm gonna disconnect my air from the robot, from the chuck. So this chuck is pneumatically actuated. Um, and so when the robot loads the part, it's actually waiting for that chuck to close. That's done with these position switches here. And so since I turned off the air, the robot's going to signal for the chuck to close, but the chuck won't actually close because it doesn't have air. So you notice the robot's just waiting forever. Once I plug the air back in, the robot can go back to operating. And so this can be tied into to anything from a door of the CNC machine to make sure that the uh, the door is closed before the machine starts uh, machining, um, or this could be a safety interlock. So again, the robot is waiting for the visual signal, and one last time, we'll run it through. And so we were able to show a couple of applications um, and we were able to highlight the flexibility of the robot to transition from one application with one product to an entirely different application with a completely different product. You can check out our website, automationdistribution.com, under the events and trainings tab for future lunch and learns, demo days, and Universal Robots Certified Training Academy dates. Thanks again.
stay safe and we appreciate your time.